welcome everybody. This is great to see so many people here for our for in our inaugural What Matters to Me and Why series here in the Medical Center. Um, what I'd like to do, go back and make catch it. What I'd like to do is introduce Jonathan Fang. Jonathan is a professor of physics and anatomy, astronomy. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> not anatomy. I thought Jonathan could give us a lecture about this, our ceiling, right, and the lights, but we, but maybe for another day. Um, anyways, um, he, Jonathan started this series in 2012 on the main campus with the support of the Chancellor's Advisory Council on Campus Climate, Culture, and Inclusion. And so Jonathan will tell us a little bit about the series. All right, well, thank you, Francine, Dean Jeffrey, for uh, that introduction. It's a real pleasure, I mean, really a pleasure for me to get a chance to join in this kickoff event. And of course, I'm looking forward to hearing our first speaker of this uh, series. As Francine mentioned, what matters to me and why was started on the general campus about seven years ago. And the motivation for it was really very simple. Some of us were curious to hear what faculty and staff at UCI, uh, people we work with, learn with, play with, on a daily basis would say when we were asking them the question, what matters to you and why? And uh, speakers were simply asked to answer that question as frankly and honestly as they were uh, able to and to take it wherever it goes. As you can imagine, it has then gone a whole variety of places. With such an open-ended question like that, people have done all sorts of things with it. Uh, but in general, people have shared uh, their deepest commitments motivations and beliefs, and often reflected on their personal journeys, both their very highest highs, uh, some of which we would already have known about, but also very importantly, their lowest lows, which are things that sometimes we would not have known about. The lectures have been deeply personal, touching, moving, sometimes absolutely hilarious, sometimes extremely sad, uh, eye-opening, insightful, and with a remarkable regularity, inspiring. Almost all the lectures are available on the web, and so we'd have seven a year, so if you do the calculation, that's about 50 videos on the web, and they're from people from every single school at the university, uh, every level of seniority in the UCI, and I would invite you to take a look if you're curious. Um, it makes for some very compelling binge watching if you're, if you're interested. <laughs> uh, the series has generated quite some interest, uh, generally on the general campus, um, the seats fill up within 24 hours of when the registration opens. Uh, given this interest, a few years ago, we started another series, What Matters to Me and Why alumni version, where alumni come back and uh, speak to current students, undergrads, telling them what matters to them and why, of course, but just basically what they've learned since graduating uh, however many years previously. Uh, now, this is the first What Matters to Me and Why at the Medical Center. It's absolutely a wonderful opportunity to have talks up here. Uh, I'd like to first thank the senior leadership uh, here who have welcomed What Matters to Me and Why the Medical Center with really open arms, so thank you very much. <laughs> and also I should thank uh, Rachel Coral, who's here, who's done really the lion's share of the work in bringing this up here. So it's been fantastically organized so far, a beautiful room, beautiful setting, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the future brings. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this over to Dean Stamos, but I did want to say that our plan to start off is that we'll have these series on a quarterly basis and see how they go. Um, I wanna encourage everybody to fill out the survey after um, because not only will it give us information about how we're doing, but also one of the key things is suggestions for future speakers. And we really want this to be, to introduce people that would be of interest to all of us, people at all levels of the medical center and the School of Medicine. So please, if you know, if you yourselves have an interesting story that you'd like to share, or you know somebody else that would be interesting, don't hesitate to recommend them. So with that, I will turn this over to Dr. Stamos. Thanks, Francine, and thank you, Jonathan. Really appreciate it. 
truthfully, we can try to find some connection between astronomy and anatomy. And there's an obvious one that comes to mind, especially as me, a colorectal surgeon. <laughs> I'm glad everybody got the joke. That's good. All right, so enough of that. KV, how are you? Jonathan set you up, didn't he? So I think uh, many of you know uh, Dr. Leigh Buckland, or KV as we know her, Kanban Leigh Buckland. And... Uh, uh, everybody admires her. She's just got boundless energy and enthusiasm. But, you know, I'll just sort of step back a little bit and say, you know, she currently serves, as everybody knows, as our, as my, our vice dean for medical education. I don't want to claim her alone. She really helps the entire team. And in that role, she's responsible for overseeing all of education, really, at this uh, university from the point of view of the School of Medicine and the Medical Center. And that includes medical student education, of course, also includes graduate, resi graduate medical education, residents and fellows, and also includes continuing education of physicians who are out in practice who come back to get uh, their CME credits from us, et cetera. So really a big role. She took us through the LCME accreditation, reaccreditation process uh, with flying colors, really uh, gets all of the credit for leading the team because it really was a team effort. And thank you for that again. So, uh, but I want to say, how did she get to UC Irvine? Well, she really started out in sort of a bad place. She started out at Berkeley, you know, for under, <laughs> under, undergraduate education. So kind of starting somewhere, at least, in the UC system, right, you know? And then she went to UCSF for her MD degree. And, uh, you know, again, moving up. And then she w took a real step down at Stanford for her pediatric residency. <laughs> and then finally found the proper home here at UCI and became an anteater. So uh, we're, we're certainly thrilled about that. She also serves as the interim chair for the Department of Pediatrics, and uh, you know she has just uh, boundless enthusiasm and energy, and also a terribly infectious positive attitude. And uh, that department has been through a lot over the last several years, and so I want to also thank her for her continued hard work and vision uh, in moving that forward. And we had a great, uh, I'll say, departmental site visit, what we call a blue ribbon visit, by two really uh, prominent pediatric chairs and and prior chairs from UCSF who came and spent two days with us and just couldn't say enough great things about about the job KV has done and the, and the, the progress, we, progress we've made in the last uh, few years. So I want to thank you again for all that. She's a true champion for our medical community. Please join me in welcoming her to the podium to share what's important to her and why. So first of all, thank you so much for braving the rain to be here. <laughs> I know there was traffic and lots of rain just a few minutes ago, so I want to thank you. Um, as I look out at all of you, I feel like it's, you know, my life all like coming together. It's like who would attend my funeral or something. And uh, so uh, I want to thank you for being here and being a part of my life. So. When I was asked to do this, um, you know, someone asked me, so are you nervous about this, you know, or excited? And I said, eh, piece of cake, no big deal. This is not like lecturing on renal physiology or something, you know. Uh, this is just talking about my life. And then when I started actually doing the talk and trying to answer the question of what matters to me and why, it became really apparent that this was going to be the toughest talk I would ever have to do. Um, because I knew that in order to really answer that question, I had to become pretty vulnerable. And I had to tell you some things that I've not really shared with a lot of people outside of my family. And so um, if I get a little, you know, emotional during the talk, you'll know why. Um, and so I appreciate your support. Um, this is totally uncomfortable. So here we go. <laughs> so. This is my family. Um, I'm a first generation immigrant from Vietnam and this is one of the first pictures of my family as we, uh, as we came to Orange County. So guess which one is me? The little one, the yellow shirt. This one? This one? Oh wow, that's yeah. great! That is me! <laughs> that, that's right here. It's the chubby cheeks, I still have those. Okay, so then when we were little, um, in the next slide, when we were little, we would tour the, the um, Southern California singing and doing this musical. 
And here's me in high school. I went to high school in Orange County. I'm very rooted here. And uh, this is me at ASB camp. That's me on dance team. This is me as homecoming princess. We would never do this now for liability's sake. <laughs> And this is me on a graduation trip with my besties. This is me um, graduating from high school, and you can see my high school is blue and gold. And I've pretty much been blue and gold my entire academic career, except for, as Dean Stamos mentioned, a little short stint at a red and white school. <laughs> And then I fulfilled my dream of being a pediatrician when I came here to UCI. It was my dream to become an academic pediatrician. My father was an anatomy teacher, and I really wanted to teach as part of uh, my career. So bringing it together and being a faculty member here was really a dream come true. This is my husband. Um, I met him, fell in love. Next slide. We had kids. <laughs> Next slide. And I um, love my job now. I, this is my medical education team, but I have a great team in pediatrics as well who are here. Um, I really love my job. And that's the end of my story. <laughs> Yay! Not really, right? Um, so I want to put, you know, what I just told you was my Instagram story. You know how like everyone looks perfect on Instagram and Facebook, right? My kids call it their brand. Fox actually showed me that, uh, told me about that uh, term, you know, what's your brand? And um, so, but I realized that that's part of who I am, what you just heard. But it's really not who I am and what really motivates me, drives me deeply. And why I behave the way I do tell y'all. Right, so I want to put some context to these photos. So this this first photo is, um, like I mentioned, one of our first pictures when we um, arrived um, to Orange County. But the journey to this photo was not, you know, all colorful and sunglasses and stuff. Um, we um, were one of the first immigrants from Vietnam, of the rush of immigrants from Vietnam, from the Vietnam War. And in 1975, when um, the United States, um, the war ended, um, my family was one of the first immigrants. And there was pretty much a rush, a chaotic rush of people, you know, really fleeing, running to um, US helicopters, airplanes, naval ships. And my family was one of those that were, you know, really running to these naval ships, trying to get on. And in that rush and stampede of people just frantically trying to get on these naval ships, um, I, I, my family was a family of eight. You saw the pictures. And I was pretty much pushed and was going to fall overboard. And at that time, my father, who to this day is my hero, reached out and, and grabbed me um, before I fell you know, to the sea below. And um, he, when, he, when he grabbed me, he had a bag of, um, of documents, legal documents, proof that, of his um, degree. He had gold in his bag, and that was supposed to ease our transition to another country. And um, that bag fell into the ocean. So growing up, one of the things that, um, you know, I was very aware of this, what happened in this story. And when I got a little older, um, I was young, but kind of understood what happened. And I asked my dad, so do you ever regret, you know, losing all that money and, you know, having a tougher transition because of what happened? And my dad always said, never. Never have I regretted that. And he said, you're my kuk bang, which if there's anyone Vietnamese in this audience, um, it means you're my little um, gold nugget. So that, from the time I was very young, that really set the tone for how I, I view life 
and how I, I view my job and how I face challenges in my life. And as we go through the next slides, I'm gonna tell you that there were a lot of challenges, many of which you can all relate to and some maybe you can't relate to. But in um, this life story of mine, you'll see um, that I faced a lot of challenges to get here and it's partly why I'm so grateful to be here. So next slide. So I told you we did this family uh, tour and on a, you know, but I wanted to tell you the background of this. When we came, my parents did not speak English, very little English, and um, they had to start over in their careers. So they had to learn English. They had to, they went to technical school to become electronic technicians. Um, we were definitely under the poverty line in terms of our socioeconomic status. Um, we were very poor. And we grew up with the great support of a church that's actually local here in Anaheim. And this lady right here, this uh, fiery redhead, awesome, energetic lady who actually I still know, she's 90 years old and still just as energetic. Um, we called her Aunt Jerry. And um, Aunt Jerry had this idea that we could be like the Sound of Music, you know, and um, be like the family von Trapp or something, and go around and do these singing tours of um, our kind of like an allegorical tour, because you can see here the Western frontier and everything, of our journey as a family um, of immigrants to the, the United States. So we went around and did these tours, but one of the reasons for these tours was to fundraise for my family and to fundraise for the church as they were supporting my family while we were getting on our feet. So that is the background to these pictures. Um, is that we, we did this partly because it was a way to make money. Other ways we made money was that my mom would cook egg rolls and um, she would sew and uh, crochet things um, as part of a way to make extra money. And my parents were, worked multiple jobs in order to keep us afloat. So that, um, I wanted to give you some of the background to that. Next. So this is my high school on a Facebook page. I look pretty darn good, right? <laughs> my kids are like, wow, you have it made. Life is so hard as a teenager. How come you had such an easy? And I'm like, no, 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 that's my Facebook profile, right? So one of the things you don't know about these pictures is every piece of clothing, besides this one, my mom worked many, many shifts to pay for that outfit. <laughs> Dance team is very expensive. And she worked many hours to pay for that. But my clothes in every other one of these pictures was either given to me or lent to me. And I had amazing best friends who really stood beside me, you know, really uh, helped me through my high school career. And part of that was they would lend me clothes. They would, um, they drove, so they would drive me around. I. Um, I lived on the outskirts of town in a very poor part of Anaheim. And my friends would, you know, drive, wake up early and still look like that and come and get me so I didn't have to ride the bus to school. So I had amazing friends, but my life, you know, is a series of these where people are just so generous, so giving, and it, it really, um, you know, I feel very fortunate to have people like that in my life. So the next picture is, um, you know, all these schools I went to, and the next picture um, is me as a pediatrician. All good, right? I mean, it's so easy. And in fact, I have to say that my high school, at Valencia High School, was so hard in terms of the sciences. I went to Cal and I thought, whoa, my teachers in high school were way harder than my Cal professors. So I actually didn't find the academics all that hard, but it wasn't just a straight shot uh, into pediatrics. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit of the bumps that I, I approached. Um, so we have doctors and med students in this room, residents, and everybody goes through this. <laughs> I think at some point in our careers we go, why are we a doctor? Do we wanna be a doctor? Maybe we should be something else. Well, you know, I can tell you I hit that big time in the middle of my um, 
college, in the middle of college. So I was spending way too much time with pre-meds. Um, anyone in medicine knows pre-meds are crazy. Like seriously crazy. And I said, I cannot spend every hour, you know, with these pre-meds. I want to do something totally other side of my brain, da, da, da. So I decided to pursue a minor in um, American literature. And then I was so fascinated by these people in my classes, my professors, because they thought differently and they approached, um, you know, the same picture differently. And, and, I, um, and then, you know, I was going to Cody's bookstore on Telegraph Avenue. It's no longer there. It makes me very sad. But, and I was seeing my professors in these turtlenecks and, and they were like reading their works, you know, poems and everything. And I'm like, I want to be that. That's what I want to be. So you can imagine my parents' reaction, <laughs> like Dead Poet Society. If anybody, if you, some of you are too young for this movie, but it's a great movie. But I walked in one day on a break from college and declared to my parents that I was no longer going to be a doctor. I wanted to be a poet. <laughs> Okay, so next slide. <laughs> um, fortunately for you all, I didn't become a poet because I realized I wasn't that good at it, you know? <laughs> um, so my poems are now for myself. <laughs> but but um, there were other reasons why I turned back to medicine, and one of them was children. I kept bumping into children that really inspired me. The, I was digging uh, ditches in Mexico um, making you know, for um, irrigation. Um, and I mean, I mean, um, plumbing, for plumbing, so that they could have a flushable toilet in a youth center. And this was up in the hills in a very poor little village in uh, Mexico. And while I was doing that, I met these two amazing, energetic children who, who really inspired me and reminded me, you know, that I wanted to be a pediatrician to serve these, these really underserved pediatric populations. And, um, and so I kept in touch with them for a long time. Um, we fell out of touch because they moved out of that area. I moved 20 times in my life. And so we fell out of touch, but for a long time and through um, college and medical school, actually, I kept in touch with them. And, um, and then there were children that I met in the homeless clinics that I was working at. And, and they, you know, kind of just kept reaffirming for me that, that I really needed to be a pediatrician that I wanted to serve children and especially children in need. Um, so the next slide, okay, this part, not even my parents know that much, okay? So you guys are all, so in the middle of medical school, there was someone I was dating from the time off and on, you know, we had this really long-term relationship, my high school sweetheart. And in the middle of medical school, because I know um, medical students come to us when there's a breakup or something in medical school, and I truly know what they're going through. So in the middle of medical school, I hit this bump. I had to decide on the match, you know, where I was going to go. And this spurred a lot of conversation with the person I was dating at the time. And, and I'll tell you, who, who knows this, this, who's seen this movie? Yeah, all right, great. So you'll know what I mean. This guy's parents were that. They were crazy <laughs> Asians, okay? Crazy, crazy, crazy. But my boyfriend at the time was not hot Nick. <laughs> and I would say in my 20s, I was hotter than her. No, just kidding. Not, not, not. There is a mismatch, you know. But anyway, so, so, but I had to, um, so at the time, um, my boyfriend said, and his family were like, well, you know, you need to follow this guy. You, you need to take a break from medicine. You know, you, you really need to re, um, you know, you've done well in your life up to now for, you know, but, 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 you know, now it's time for you to support him. And it really took me all the way back to that, you know, 
the, the day that I was crossing that boat, that ship, you know, getting on that ship and almost dying and, and, and wanting to be a doctor from the time I was little. And I said, I can't. I can't do that. I can't give up my dreams. Um, and so we wrestled with that for a long time and we ended up parting ways. Um, but I can tell you that was a really, it really um, was difficult to do. So I, next picture, okay. So I'll tell you a little bit before I tell you about this picture. So I was um, in a bad state after that breakup, okay? And, um, and I would, you know, write a lot of poems, like I said, you know, for myself. Um, and I would take my guitar and go sing. I was horrible at guitar by the way, but I would go out and be all dramatic and Berkeley-ish and, and sing at the park. <laughs> and, and so one day this, this uh, you know, I'm, I'm playing my guitar, being all dramatic, and I look over and this guy has his guitar. This is not my husband, by the way, so uh, this picture is <laughs> not, not um, so I see this guy and he's looking at me and he's like, oh, you know, you play guitar. So I, I we started talking and I told him, oh, you know, so I don't know why, because I'm very private, but because I thought he was a total stranger, I'm, I pour out my heart to this guy and I say, you know, I broke up with this guy many years and, and I don't know if I want to be a pediatrician anymore. I, I don't know if I made the right choice. Uh, maybe I should have followed him. And, um, and so the guy says, no, you, you're you know, from everything you tell me, you're doing the right thing, you made the right choice. So I, you know, came from that and I'm like, yes, you know, I'm, I'm doing the right thing. Next day, I kid you not, I go on my pediatric rotation <laughs> and in walks this guy and it's the guy. <laughs> Yes, yes. So this, he had so great emotional intelligence that he never mentioned our day in the park, you know, and our talking, the whole rotation. But I knew, <laughs> I knew like divine intervention, man, I am supposed to be a pediatrician. Um, so later I meet this amazing man who, you know, really is the peanut butter to my jelly. He's extremely a great fit for me. Um, my husband is not only, like I said, he's, he is hot, you know, he is, he is, uh, you know, just awesome. He very chill, very um, funny. And um, when I met him, I realized that I met the right person because I laughed so much. And I, I felt like I could tell him everything and be myself and I could pursue my dreams. And he was always there and he still is. People ask me all the time at these women in medicine things, how do you balance everything? And I tell them, you don't do it alone. You have great people you work with. Like I see my pediatric and, and med ed team here. You, you have great people that surround you and keep you know, giving you motivation and you all, I'm looking at you all because you're all part of that. And, and my husband is part of that. And so I was so grateful. We've been married for 20 years now. Um, thank you. <laughs> I tell him I'm very long suffering, you know, so um, no, he makes it easy. So my next picture is my kids. And, um, you know, this is one of my favorite pictures of my family. And part of it was, this was a milestone for me. It was the first time I really knew that my kids were going to be okay. And I'll show you the next slide. I see our neonatologist here. I love y'all. I, you know, so Tommy, Tommy probably has PTSD from this. Tommy, you're here. <laughs> okay, so Tommy and I, our, our, one of our first meetings was him telling me what's going on with my kids in the, in the neonatal intensive care unit. So when I was pregnant with my twins, they shared a placenta, so they had a lot of complications. I got to know a lot of, pretty much actually all of our FM, um, maternal fetal medicine um, faculty. They're so, they were so amazing. And I got to know a lot of our neonatologists who um, did a fantastic job with my kids. I was on bed rest for two months, and um, in that time, 
I was doing a lot of research on this um, disease, twin to twin transfusion syndrome, and I got to know um, the, the founder of that um, organization. I became very involved with that since then. But it was through that time of being on bed rest and seeing my own kids being uh, in the neonatal intensive care unit, being a patient, we always talk about, you know, doctors, until you're a patient, you really don't know what it's like to be a patient. And, um, and I felt like this whole time really made me a better doctor, made me a better person actually going through um, some of that, those struggles. And I, I, during this time I was on bed rest, I'm like Rebecca, I can't sit still. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> um, so, so I was already writing this book and um, while I was on bed rest, because two months of doing what, you know? And so I was able to um, partner with the founder of the TTS Foundation to, in writing this book. So um, next picture. And so now that you know a little bit, maybe TMI, you know, about me, why now you I can kind of give you more context what matters to me well child health matters to me a lot I went I made a very long journey to be here because I wanted to be a pediatrician I wanted to make sure that children were well cared for and that um, that we would we would do that well wherever I went I wanted to do that personally well I wanted and now I'm in a position that I feel I get to work with a great team that does that very well. And, um, and so child health really matters to me and I wanna continue to see our organization get better there. Diversity, inclusion, and equity mean a lot to me. Um, the, in this picture, I'm holding Lean In. It's one of my favorite books. If you haven't read it, it's fantastic. Even for men, I think it gives you great tips, but also so you can see some of the struggles women face that you may not necessarily see. Um, but it means a lot to me. Um, I'm a first generation immigrant, as you know from my story. I'm a woman of color. And if you look at other vice deans across the country, they don't necessarily look like me. I've been doing a master's in education because I'm just a glutton for punishment, you know? And one of the, the emphasis that I'm doing is um, educational leadership. And so as part of that, one of the things that really came out was the inequity, the gender inequity in all the health professions, including I see nurses, including nursing, medicine, dentistry. In medicine, 50% of women go into medicine. That's, we do a great job. We have 50% or even more women in our class. And nationally, that's, that's the statistic. But if you look at the higher levels, full professors, chairs, deans, the numbers go down, 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 down to, you know, less than 20%. And even in pediatrics that's female dominated, it's about 20% chairs that are female. And so nationally, we need to do a better job. And, and I am so happy and that I landed at UCI because I really feel that we're, we really strive to have diversity and uh, equity and inclusion here. But like I told Terrence, you know, I want to see us continue to do great. I want us um, to be leaders for other places. So this really means a lot to me. And then the next um, slide is medical education means a lot to me. Every year I get the honor of doing this oath um, the, for graduating seniors and I look out and I see their brilliant faces and I, they're like all my children and I'm sending them out to the world. It is a privilege for us to be able to train the next generation of, of physicians. We have an impact that is exponential through all these bodies that we look out. And it's a great honor and responsibility because how they will be is partly who we are and how we interface with them and the role modeling that we do with them. And that's at all levels, not just faculty, but nurses that interact with them and staff that interact with them. And as you can see, you know, life is not just about clinical medicine, right? It's about all of the other mentoring that we do and that shapes who they are, not just as physicians, but as people. So next, um, I, the dean mentioned I go on these visits with the LCME. This is a picture of my last visit. You know, we're touring a site that's being um, 
built. That's why we're in these hard hats. I love accreditation. Dina and I are crazy that way, right? Like there's so much paperwork. They give you like thousands of papers to review, like to minutia about schools. And, and um, it's a lot of work. We do these 14 hour days when we go on these visits. It, it's like I'm breaking all kinds of duty hour rules and staying up after the 14, you know, so, but it's so satisfying because there's nothing, I feel like educating educators has that even more exponential effect. And, and being able to go across the country and help schools um, become better and also to learn from them so we become better is such a privilege. And I'm so grateful that the LCME has decided to invite me year after year back to doing these visits because I really think there's great value in it um, and I'm honored to do it. And then, so I wanna end with this slide. This is me very much looking like a true gold nugget. <laughs> My mom dressed me in, you know, very bright colors, like he pointed me out, you know. And, but um, so, you know, this is me when I was little, and this is me with the medical education team. And, and I wanted to end with this because people have said to me, almost criticizing throughout my life, you smile too much. <laughs> I once actually taught a class on homelessness at Berkeley, and I got these great evals. One of them said, too happy. <laughs> and then I was, uh, you know, I, when I was a program director, I was laughing about something outside of someone's office, and they came out and they said, you laugh too much, and, and, and I wish I had your job, you know? And then I've had people um, who have taken my job and have said, oh my gosh, you made the job look so fun and easy and this job is really hard. So, so why do I laugh so much? And why, why, why do I smile? And why does it seem that I'm sometimes annoying to people because I'm so happy or overly optimistic or love my job so much or love UCI so much? It's annoying to some people, and I get that, but now that you know my life story, you know why. Because when you, from an early age, know that every day is an added day, that, that you know, I just got 40 more years of days that I didn't feel like I deserve. You know, there, you see my whole, life trajectory and all the people that have gotten me to where I am. And, and so that's why I approach challenges maybe differently than some people. And why I, I see things glass half full. You know, and part of that is because I'm grateful to, to what I have. And every day that I have, and people in this room that put me where I am now, I feel like um, the teams that have supported me and make me look good, thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I, I feel that all of you are part of that journey that I have and um, I'm very grateful for. Um, I don't deserve it, but I'm glad I have it, you know? Um, and so if any day I work with you and I seem a little bit annoyingly happy, you can put that on my evaluations, you know? <laughs> Um, I'm up for, uh, you know, a review of my deanship at some point pretty soon, and, and you're free to put that. <laughs> I've seen it all. You know, every evaluation has something about me being too happy. Uh, but now you know why and why that motivates me. So I would ask you, if you knew that every day that you have is given, how would you view, you know, your life differently you know, how would you view your, your job at UCI differently? And how would you answer what matters to you? And, and so I'm so looking forward to hearing your stories and hearing what matters to you because I think all of you are amazing and you have fantastic stories. So I, I really look forward to this series and, and hearing more about our um, great people here in this room and, and outside of this room as well. Thank you.